verses because I don't believe in putting more food out than what you are about to eat, but I kind of need to read all of these verses. John chapter 5, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 11. When you have it, say I have it right now. Watch this. Verse 1 reads like this. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and the Jews went up to Jerusalem. Now there was at Jerusalem, by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda. Having five porches, in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after troubling the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down, step it down before me. Uh, they skipping him in the line. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them. Watch this. He that made me whole, the same unto me. He said unto me, take up thy bed and walk. Before you take your seat, uh, as you read Jesus uh, healing this man who was at the pool of Bethesda and he said every time he would try to get in the pool the folk would skip him the text goes on to tell us that the Pharisees had a problem because Jesus healed the man on the Sabbath and told him to take up his bed and walk but if I can use for a subject today because a man kept getting skipped. And I know that some of you feel that some blessings would come to you, but it seems as though you are getting skipped or looked over. Uh, if I can preach on a thought today, I would like to preach on this subject. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Pastor Nash going to preach about? When is it my turn? When is it my turn? When is it my turn? You may be seated in Jesus' name. When is it my turn? All right. In life, Pastor Shaq, there are times when our life is arranged. Our life is in is in order at times. Come on now. And then there are times when uh, our lives are disarranged, meaning that we have disorders in our life sometimes. Anyone out there ever had any problems? It could be with your marriage. It could be with folk in the church. Sometimes you're going to have disorders in your life. Preach that tonight. Sometimes when you go see the doctor, he may tell you that you're sick and you can't get well. That is 
a disorder. Thanks, Pastor Nash. In the story, we find uh, Deacon Drew that the Jewish festival in Jerusalem, that there was a pool, the Bible says, by the sheep market that had five porches. One, two, three, four, five. The text says that the place was called Bethesda, which means in the Hebrew word, house of mercy. All right. But isn't it something that sometimes you can come to the house of mercy and not find mercy? The Bible tells us, Mama Hetty, that uh, the lame, the blind, and the sick and the disease would go down to the pool to be healed. And the angel of the Lord would come and he would trouble the water. Right. He would come at a certain season and, and the first one stepped in while the water is being troubled, Daddy Coleman. He would be made whole. All right. All right. Yes, sir. But in this text, we uh, also, it also tells us Pastor Woods about a man that had been in his condition 38 years. Now that is a long time to be sick. The scripture indicates to us that the man was impotent. All right, all right. Uh, not the kind of impotent. Y'all women think right, about right. the men in here. That's right. That's right. Preach about some that. But the man was impotent, meaning that he was weak and he was lacking physical ability to walk. That's right. So then he was paralyzed and he was unable to fence for himself because the text says that he told Jesus that he has no man to put him in the pool. That's right. That's right. Everyone would walk over him and they would skip over him. Uh, it, it, it reminds me of back when we had the sub-zero weather when a woman had fell down at a bus stop. All the cars passing the by and even a man walked over her and then later she died. That's right. That's right. That's right. Wow. So then he had a mobility issue, this man. He uh, was stagnated from getting to the place where he needed to go. Uh -huh. Isn't it something how when you have a problem and folk would just walk by you? Yeah. Man, man. Go ahead, Pastor. Believing that you have it all together, Sister Shirley, and thinking that you can make it, and if you can make it, they feel that you can take it. But sometimes we need a little help. Yeah. All right. All right. That's right. You've been going through something in the same thing all your life. Uh -huh. And folk just won't help. They feel that what you're going through, that it's attached to you. Tell somebody next to you, the devil is a liar. I'm going to lose this. But don't you know, listen, it seems sometimes as though you have exhausted all of your resources because Listen, I heard a blues singer say, nobody wants you when you're down and out. It seems like that's when folk are far from you when you need help. That's right. That's right. Your parents, your children, even your pastor, no one understands at times, uh, Sister Debbie, what you're dealing with. They don't see you crying in the midnight hour and no one is there to help you. They all just look down on you like with this man. I believe that the only time that you should look down on a person is when you are trying to help to pick them up. Come on, that's a good place to praise God. But 
But sometimes you are left feeling that only good things happen to other people and not you. Because that's how problems will make you feel in your life. That's right. This man was helpless at the pool where he should have been shown mercy. He was helpless and everyone acted as though they did not see him there. Now if he had a bunch of money and some corn, somebody would have easily lifted him and took him up to the front. Some of y'all think folk like y'all. They don't like you. They like what you have. I don't think my children like me. They don't come around me till they want something. This man was helpless. I say he was helpless uh, because when Jesus asked him, did he want to be made whole? He tells Jesus that he has no one to Put him in the pool. Mm -hmm. right. Some people want to see you messed up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and let me tell you, That's if the truth be told, Sister Regina, Sister Regina, everyone that is successful has had someone to help them. Everyone that is successful, someone has helped them. But sad to say, most folk only see things when it involves them. Right. That's right. Amen. That's right. People will tell you, help yourself. <laughs> Even though someone has helped them. Right. How soon do we forget, Brother Otis? The man said that everyone would step over him and they would skip him and he was at the pool waiting. But thanks be to God that King Jesus was watching. He was watching him lying there and it's a true saying that his eyes is on the sparrow and if he cares for the sparrows that he watches over you and I. So you see, folk may step over you right now, James. Right. But you just wait and see how God is going to bless you. Amen. Amen. Because I'm glad that whatever I'm dealing with, God is not through with me yet. Even though man will throw you away, God still, as I preached a few weeks ago, he will put you on the potter's wheel and he's shaping you and molding you. Uh, if you would just learn how to be still and wait on God. Because some of us, we let too many people's opinions dictate what we're going to be, how we're going to live. But let me tell you something. If you live by other folk critics' opinions, then you will die by their criticism. But ain't you glad that God will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies? Because I heard somebody say, you looking down on me right now. But the same people that you meet going up, you will meet the same folks sometime going down, Brother John Paul. So the man was getting skilled. And he couldn't get help from anyone. Have you ever been like that? You couldn't get help. You you probably long folk money, but when it's time for them to help you out. Huh? Even though he's in a place of healing, uh, mama, and he's getting skipped. You see, let me tell you something. You can be at the right place, Deacon Smith, and still be left out. He's at the house of mercy, Brother Floyd, and still be left out. You can be in the church and still be left out. Yes, I, I heard people saying, my friends act better than this than when I was in the world. Yeah, right, right. Listen, don't 
worry about it because the Lord see folk misusing you. The Lord see folk who don't want you to get your turn. Huh? That's why he said he will prepare, prepare a table before you be, if, before your haters. Some of the Jews had a problem because Jesus healed this man on the Sabbath. As I said in the Sunday school lesson, I don't care if it's a Sabbath or Wednesday. It's always good to do good. Any day. So God will love you in spite of your inabilities. And I like that too, your shortcomings. Even when folk would deny, would deny you your tender love and care that they should be giving you, God will show you that when you feel unlovable, that he loved you. Tell somebody, God got you. Tell that neighbor, God got you. The Lord will do a drive-by in your favor. This man did not and, and listen to the story. Pastor Shaq he didn't even have to get into the pool. All right, right, right. The Lord healed him right there and said take up your bed and walk. Yeah. I watched something and I'm getting ready to close. Somebody put on social media a bunch of women were standing in line and so this, they was at the front door because they, they just knew the interviewer would come out of this front door. And they kept pushing this young lady back. She was at the head. All of them just you know, picking on, pushing her to the back. And as they pushed her to the back door, when the interviewer came out, he opened the back door and she was first. See, the first will be last and the last will be first. Y'all are going to get that tomorrow. <laughs> The man did not even have to get in the pool. And the bed that once carried him, he was now carrying the bed. I stopped by to tell you that. The Lord will pick you up. And, and, and y'all know the saying that he will turn you around and, and he will put your feet on a solid ground. Amen. You see, you may not be first in the water or you not, may not even be first in line at the hospital <laughs> but I declare <laughs> that the Lord <laughs> he will make house calls <laughs> ain't you glad <laughs> he don't have to <laughs> have you pushed to the front <laughs> but he will come <laughs> Just where you are, someone sung a song. They said Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want, everything you need. God's got it. I'm so glad that my steps, my steps, my steps are ordered by the Lord. Trouble the waters of the vision. He will trouble the waters of loneliness. I'm so glad that he troubled the waters when I was sick in my body. I was sick and couldn't get well. But he troubled the water. He will trouble the water. If you're in a bad relationship, won't he do it? I'm so glad every time someone stepped over me, God got me. But sometimes I fall and I can't get up. But God got me. But there's a fountain with Emmanuel blood flowing in his vein. Yes, it's my turn. Thank you.
skip me now. But you wait and see what God is going to do for me. Tell somebody it's my turn. It's my turn. It's my turn. Let us say, this is my turn.
Hey, we, uh, we got a one-hour service, one-hour power. We get ready to go home, but before we do, uh, I believe we have some first-time, a few a couple first-time visitors. Can y'all stand? A friend of Lewis. Amen. Amen. Y'all brought y'all going to too, huh? Okay, let me start with you. Sweetheart, what's your name? Huh? Ray. Ray? Okay. Well, Doc, what's your name? Uh, my name is Roman. Roman? Okay. Rochelle. P Porsche? Rochelle. All y'all eyes? What's up with that, man? <laughs> Hey, we want to say we're glad that y'all came, man, and uh, we're glad that Lewis invited you, and if y'all don't have a church home, uh, I want to say this is not a perfect church, because when anybody in here walk in this door, it remains not to be perfect, but it is a, a, a great church, and uh, if you're looking for a church home, just keep on coming, okay? Y'all don't say anything. I enjoyed the service, that's all. Bless you, man, bless you. Hey, man, come on, let's give a little bit of hand for you, man. Give him all the hand. 